Hi friends, if you remember, I had published a project in the past with the name of uh, automatic fan controller or something like that. That project was simple because my intention was not to use any microcontroller for the circuit. So simply, when the temperature was passing a certain threshold, which of, which of course you were able to define that threshold, then the circuit was activating a cooling fan and vice versa however i decided to design something more professional here and, and i test it on the breadboard before i go, before i go to the schematic and pcb so it uses an 80 tiny teradine microcontroller and you can connect almost any standard fan to the output i decided to uh, uh, I decided to set the PWM frequency to 25 kHz, which is used uh, uh, by the majority of the standard fans, such as this CPU fan. I think it belongs to the third and fourth generation of the Intel CPUs. I connected the output of the potentiometer. This potentiometer resembles the uh, temperature sensor. In the real world on your PCB, you're going to use this LM35 temperature sensor. However, for easy testing, I just use this potentiometer. This multimeter shows the output voltage of the potentiometer. So 184 milliamps, uh, it's around 18 degrees in the temperature sensor. And this oscilloscope will show, will show the output, uh, PWM output signal. So as the uh, 184 is the output of the sensor or here potentiometer, so 18 degrees. So we don't need any specific PWM, it is zero because the temperature is below 25 standard room temperature. If I increase that and pass over 25, do you see that? Now the duty cycle of the PWM pulse increases and the frequency is around 25 kilohertz. Let me increase the voltage or which is which means increasing the temperature. Now it is 40. The duty cycle is around 50 or a bit more maybe. Let's go higher. Now it's uh, around 23 degrees or 530 milliamps and you can see the duty cycle. You might hear the noise of the fan. It rotates much faster. Do you see that? When we pass over, third, uh, when we pass over 60 degrees, uh, the device will activate a warning buzzer and also this LED resembles a relay. In your PCB, uh, a relay will, will, will be activated and that relay turns off your device to save that device uh, from over temperature because it shows that there is something wrong with the cooling system. It could be, it could be fan or whatever. So, this warns the user that there is something wrong here and even if the temperature drops uh, the device will remain in this situation because if the temperature uh, drops and the device turns off the warning then you the user might not might not know that there is something wrong here and this causes the problem in future because uh, the problem might ap appear again in future. So uh, that's it for now. We will go to the schematic and PCB and you can get a better picture of how this circuit looks like. All right, this is the Altium Designer environment. I use the version 22.5.1. If you don't have the Altium Designer on your computer, there is a link in the YouTube video description 
that allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. So anyway, let's go to the schematic. This is the schematic diagram. It looks a bit crowded, however, it's easy and straightforward. This is the 80 tiny 13 microcontroller, LM35 connector, ISP uh, programmer for the microcontroller, the, contr the connector for the ISP programmer, and the relay for the device. And this is the fan connector. This is the buzzer and LED for warning, and this is the regulator. I can explain the schematic completely here. However, it just elongates the video and makes it boring. So I have explained everything in the article. So just check the, visit the article link in the video description. Uh, before I go to the PCB, this uh, project, this PCB project, I think it took me around two to three hours uh, to finish. However, this time uh, was much more if I didn't use some available libraries such as the Symaxis component libraries. So if you install the uh, Symaxis Altium plugin, which you can access from here and here, it just reduces the design time significantly. I think I at least I used it for three or four components here. So these libraries are, are free and they do follow industrial IPC footprint standards. You can get more details in the article and the download links and etc. It's totally free. Let's go to the PCB. Okay, this is the PCB layout. It's a two layers PCB, PCB board and except relay and connectors, other components are SMD. So uh, the first thing I want to show you is this connector. Let me go to 3D. Maybe it's easier. There we go. This is a power connector. This is for the temperature. This is for the fan. And you are not bounded to just uh, to use just one fan. You can uh, connect several fan in parallel, parallel and connect them in one in this connector in one connector here. So you are not bounded to just use one fan. And this is the buzzer connector and this is a relay and this is the this is your device that can be connected here uh, to be protected protected against over temperature uh, one thing i am want i want to show you is this isolation gap so why i put this isolation gap because you uh, the user might use an ac load here and this tracks might carry an AC current. So for, uh, so to consider the electrical safety rules, I have, I had to put this creepage or board cutout. Let me show you in 3D. And the back side. So I had to implement this board cutout to make sure that this board, uh, follow the electrical safety rules okay uh, it doesn't matter for this uh, from this line and and this pad because the distance is around four millimeter so it's okay you can leave it as it is four millimeter distance is good however this one is the distance is low so i have implemented or inserted this board cut out here and this is the isp connector uh, Nothing very much remains here. You shouldn't have any problem with soldering the components or if you don't have time, you can order it assembled. Uh, as well as the schematic, I have, explained, <coughs> I have explained in more details in the article. Let's go to the assembly drawing. And this is a very nice feature of the Altium, this assembly drawing. You can see the board from a variety of angles in, for inspection purposes. Uh, so this is a new feature of the Altium. I think they have implemented this from 21 ver version 21 or 22, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, you can use this uh, 
feature also to document your project project more professionally anyway that's it let's go to the next step i will explain the code microcontroller code all right this is the code for the microcontroller and as you see i have used the arduino ide the version is 1.8.19 i used the microcore board manager which provides the support for the 80 tiny 13 microcontroller let's go to the code this is the definition for the clock speed 9.6 megahertz and digital and analog pins the analog pin should be declared like this uh, and again the declaration for the pins one limitation of the arduino is that we cannot directly generate a pwm pulse with the frequency of 25 kilohertz so we have to go through registers and i use the face correct pwm mode with no prescaler uh, which creates a 25 kilohertz pwm pulse uh, you will read the details yourself and this is the the code that reads the temperature values then average it and here it decides what to do after uh, with the temperature value i mean the decision that it should make the pwm uh, duty cycle or go to the emergency off function which is a while loop that the board will stay here until we press the reset button or turn on turn off and on the board again so here this map function so this is the digital value for 25 degrees and this is the digital value for the 60 degrees uh, we can modify the code if you like and this is the 60 the i mean the upper threshold which goes to the emergency function it's around 60 degrees you can modify this these values if you like uh, so after if you're done with your modification just compile the code and then come here and export and press this export compiled binary and it will generate uh, an, a hex file and you should use an AVR programmer to burn the hex file into your microcontroller you can use whatever AVR programmer you like for example the cheap USB ASP programmer or whatever so that's it I will provide some more details in the article I hope you like this project uh, just give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Catch you next time.